Um, so this is kind of a different uh, paper or project from the previous ones um, in the temporal um, dimension that we target here. So earlier it was more on the behavioral data or on the user dimension. Here it's more on the, the query or in this case the temporal question which might be uh, time uh, related or have, have time constraints. So in this talk I would like to um, introduce our benchmark uh, tick which is a new benchmark for temporal question answering with implicit time constraints. Uh, the first author, Chen Chia, is also here. Um, is from Chengdu University and has also introduced already. Uh, I'm a PhD student at the Max Planck Institute for Informatics, supervised also by Gerhard Weikum. Um, so I would briefly like to motivate uh, the problem of temporal question answering with temporal or implicit constraints. Uh, talk about the construction about uh, of the tick benchmark uh, on a high level mostly um, analyze some of the characteristics uh, conduct experiments also with large language models um, for example and uh, finally come to some conclusion points so temporal uh, questions are quite common in um, question answering systems also in uh, query logs um, for example, questions like which football club did Messi join in 2023? Because Messi, as many of you might know, uh, played for more than one football club. And here it's decisive to actually consider this temporal constraint in 2023 to not uh, simply return probably the most, um, yeah, the most prominent answer to this question, which would be FC Barcelona, which is very highly uh, related to Lionel Messi. So many user questions are time sensitive and the temporal condition can often be explicitly given as in this case which mentions in 2023. On the other hand it is also natural and actually often the case that this temporal condition is provided implicitly. So consider this new question which football club did Messi join after Paris Saint-Germain where this in 2023 isn't spelled out explicitly anymore but this is hidden behind the fact that he played for Paris Saint-Germain after this uh, time and point. So in, for these kind of queries, um, it is decisive that the QA system has to understand this implicit temporal constraint, has to map it to some um, explicit uh, date or point in time, time period. And this is very challenging for existing question answering system, especially for the general purpose QA systems, also for temporal QA systems as we will find later and especially also for large language systems uh, models. So there are a few benchmarks also around uh, for Temple QA that have been uh, specifically designed to this end, but they have are quite limited uh, with respect to such um, implicit questions. So uh, namely, for example, temp questions or also time questions have only 1,000 uh, or less than 1,000 of these questions. And uh, on the other hand, there are other benchmarks available that have a lot of implicit questions, but these are really limited in question intent. So these, uh, to name two, Quang questions and temp reason, these are both template based. So they come from the knowledge graph and the questions are derived from only five to 10 uh, knowledge based relations. And yeah, thus they cannot really capture the, the um, diversity of information needs that typically uh, users would have. Here I also show a few of these relations like member of sports team, um, spouse or position help. So they cannot really capture the um, diversity of information needs that uh, user systems might face. On the other hand, also the questions in the existing benchmarks are derived from a single source. So there are benchmarks, for example, for um, question answering over knowledge bases and then it's typically also entered that all questions are uh, answerable using exactly this knowledge base. On the other hand, there are benchmarks um, that come from info boxes from Wikipedia. And then again, it's assured that all questions are answerable using these sources. And that's actually the case for all of the, the benchmarks out there, um, which is also limiting, uh, as we will see in a second. So um, to overcome these challenges, we designed a new data set, uh, namely TIC, Temple Implicit Questions, which has 10,000 of these um, implicit questions and one novelty is that we 
derive these questions um, from multiple knowledge sources. So we do not restrict ourselves to a single source, um, but we use the Wikipedia text, the Wikipedia info boxes, and also the Wikidata knowledge base um, completely to uh, construct these questions. And thus we also um, allow for a heterogeneous evaluation in which the knowledge uh, the QA system can make use and leverage multiple of such information sources to derive the answer. The um, benchmark is derived using an automatic construction pipeline that we designed here. And we also made sure that it's configurable among various dimensions. So we can set the temporal scope of questions so we can limit it, for example, to one specific year in which we are interested. Um, we can also control the domain diversity. We could, for example, limit it towards questions about football or probably in the financial or political domain. We can also control the ratio of prominent versus long tail entities, long tail entities being the ones that are um, rarely uh, mentioned in web text, for example, uh, and other um, configurations like the question complexity or the total number of, of questions. So I would briefly also, or I would give the high level intuitions, I cannot go into too many implementation details of how we constructed the benchmark. And there are actually two different key ideas that are underlying or that, that we use to design our method. So the first one is that implicit questions typically consist of um, two different parts, which is the main question that actually um, could also um, use an explicit temporal constraint and then the implicit constraint uh, itself. So given this example, um, which football club did Messi join would be the main question that's there can be um, a uh, time constraint added to this question or not. And then this after Paris Saint-Germain actually um, defines the implicit constraint that uh, the question answering system should consider. And the key idea here, or the first key idea, is that we would aim to initialize these parts individually, so based on two different information snippets that might also come from different sources. So for example, the first part could be come from a, from a sentence from Wikipedia text like Messi joined American Club Inter Miami in July 2023. And the second part could come from a knowledge base uh, specifying the information that Lionel Messi was playing for Paris Saint-Germain in this time period. The second key idea that was underlying our construction methodology was that we aim to start from Wikipedia year pages. And the uh, intuition here is that the temporal constraint is typically something salient. You wouldn't ask uh, about uh, for which football club did Messi play when, I don't know, he um, gave an interview at uh, in Madrid or something. So you would really want to provide some salient uh, event of the entity or also a global event like, for example, the COVID. Um, pandemic. Um, and here the idea was to start from Wikipedia year pages because they actually list uh, um, notable events. So uh, you can see it on the right for the year uh, 2024. So they um, provide the dates and a list of notable events that happened at these dates. And this is easily possible and gave us a quite good starting point of, uh, of identifying notable events uh, that could be valid uh, temporal constraints. So the construction methodology starts with uh, sampling topic entities. And these topic entities are sampled from the Wikipedia year pages we just um, talked about. Um, and are also, so some example would be, for example, here, Alan Page that we sample from uh, this Wikipedia year pages. We would then retrieve information snippets from Wikipedia and the Wikidata knowledge graph um, essentially, a retrieval system is in place here. Um, as said, these would be on the, um, on the sentence level, so we would linearize, for example, info box entries to, to make them also possible um, and readable into a quasi-natural language form. And then we connect these snippets with a temporal relation, if it's valid, uh, to construct so-called pseudo-questions. So in this step, we essentially play, replace the target answer um, by uh, a question word 
and the uh, answer type that we are looking for and also connect the two uh, information snippets using this temporal code relation during in this, uh, in this case. By the way, uh, the formatting is a bit off because uh, there ha seems to be a problem with the PowerPoint presentation. So uh, there are some issues on the slides. I hope it's still readable. So this pseudo question is uh, hardly natural, as you might notice. So this isn't really a, a question a user might ask. So therefore, in the final step, we also have a question rephrasing in which we use uh, language models to um, rephrase this pseudo question into a natural one. And this also worked uh, quite well, as we found in experiments and observed also uh, manually. And typically, it also included quite some diversity in, in how the questions are rephrased. So for example, here, the Turing is also replaced by while, which introduces some. Uh, so it's not templated, uh, after all, with this rephrasing step also. So coming to the characteristics, I would briefly also like to go or show some examples which could also help to, to better understand the methodology. So here we sampled the topic entity Alicia Keys. We collected two information snippets from text and KB. We again constructed this pseudo question, uh, what album Alicia Keys followed up her debut with, uh, which was released, and so on. And then the steering was eventually uh, replaced by this, by this when, in the final question, what album did Alicia Keys release when Noah Jones won the Grammy Award for Best New Artist? So I also have some other examples. I think in the interest of time, I wouldn't go into too many details here. Some more examples are which album released by Chris Brown topped the Billboard 200 when he was performing in Sydney. What was Clarence Andrew Cannon's uh, occupation before becoming a lawyer? Or what television series was Hulk Hogan staring in when he signed with World Championship Wrestling? So these are the kind of questions that we derive. And as mentioned already, and what we will also show later in experiments, these are quite challenging for uh, current systems. So we um, collected a total of 10,000 implicit questions split into train, dev, and test sets. These are derived from 10,000 topic entities. So we, um, for each topic entity, we exactly um, constructed one such question, which was one um, measure to, to make it more diverse. And the temporal relations we used are before, during, and after. And during was the most frequent one that was valid for the uh, evidences that we collected. We uh, aimed to balance the fraction of long tail versus uh, anti uh, prominent entities, because this is also typically something that, uh, for example, language models fail with to answer knowledge about long tail entities. So as a long tail entity, we um, define an entity that has less than 20 knowledge base facts, or knowledge graph facts, and a prominent entity with more than 500 knowledge base facts. So for both, we roughly collected 2,500 such uh, topic entities uh, that we started from. The, the remainder are, um, are the torso entities, so uh, in between the 20 and 500. So this was actively controlled and is one uh, yeah, advantage of our active uh, construction methodology. Um, further, we also analyzed the source combinations that went into the questions. So we instantiate the two parts from different sources and we found that, in general, this is quite balanced. So we did not control this at all. And we found that there was not one single information source overrepresented, and also not a combination of information sources that was overrepresented. So that was quite uh, interesting to see also, and also helps to uh, make the benchmark more diverse. Uh, finally, we um, have 12,000 years uh, present in our questions, 500 months and roughly 8,000 dates. We uh, started from the year pages 1800, so going quite a while back to 2025. Uh, we have 2.45 entities per question and roughly 18 words per question, so questions can also get a bit longer uh, sometimes. More details also in the paper if you are interested in that. Um, coming to the experiments, we um, experimented with a diverse range of systems that we ran on our benchmark and tried to understand what existing systems can really, uh, how well they can do on these kind of questions. So we used InstructGPT and GPT-4. 
Then we uh, used a range of uh, methods for heterogeneous QA. So they tap into multiple sources, um, essentially the Wikidata and the Wikipedia, and also a temple QA methods. Um, one is exact, that um, has been used quite often also in uh, temple QA methods. And uh, FAVE, which was um, also published or um, which will be published with this dub 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 conference. And that is also from the same authors. And I would like to briefly also give some details on, on this methodology. So if you are more interested into that, I would uh, be happy if you also attend the poster session that happens on Thursday in the central ballroom, um, where we will give more details if you're interested into this work. So uh, given this question that I initially used for motivating, which football club did Messi join after Paris Saint-Germain? The key idea is to explicitly understand the um, temporal constraint and map it to some um, temporal value that you can actually use later to prune irrelevant evidence. So the key intuition that we have is that we phrase an intermediate question that covers this um, temporal constraint. So from this uh, after Paris Saint-Germain, we construct the question when did Lionel Messi play for Paris Saint-Germain. We then derive the answer using a recursive call of our method, obtain the intermediate answers, which would be a, a time span in this case, August 2021 to July 2023. And then we construct a um, structured frame that essentially covers the information need in a structured manner. So we aim to identify the question entity, which would be messy, the, the relation um, that is matchable with heterogeneous sources, the expected answer type, the relation, uh, and also this temporal value coming from the answer. And then this information is used in the remainder to answer the question also to uh, filter out the um, irrelevant temporal information. So during the evidence retrieval, what we do is we do not blindly retrieve evidence, but we also aim to prune out the evidence that is not compatible with our temporal constraints that we have in the structured frame. We then finally um, have some answering stage, an explainable answering stage. I won't go into many details here to derive the answer from this uh, evidence and finally provide the answer and also an explanation, um, including supporting evidence for this answer um, to the end user. So this, um, for the experiments, uh, continuing with that, um, we use position at one, mean reciprocal rank, and hits at five. In this presentation, I would limit myself to position at one. Other results are, of course, in the paper. And what we found is that, um, in general, as a first observation, these implicit questions are indeed very challenging, especially for large language models. So they were uh, merely able to answer 0.24 of the questions, 24% of the questions correctly, which is not a huge portion uh, in general, of course. Uh, then we found that external grounding uh, helps a lot. So these, uh, this middle part is from heterogeneous QA systems that already integrate um, external grounding, and these uh, really boosted the performance to up to uh, 45%. And then finally, um, we obtained the best performance with the, the method I just briefly described, which explicitly resolves these implicit questions. And I think that there can be also future research in this direction because the performance is still below 50%, so there's plenty of room for improvement overall. Um, I would briefly also like to mention some common failure cases. So there were 66% 6 of the questions that none of the two language models was able to answer. So um, what we observed manually is that they often ignored the temporal constraint. So you could just uh, ask what, with whatever temporal constraint and it would give more or less the same answer. Um, this might be biased just by the uh, inherent uh, probabilities towards these uh, prominent answers. Uh, the heterogeneous QA methods uh, often under misunderstood the temporal constraint. So in this case, it would uh, often um, compute uh, um, the answer for before receiving his Bachelor of Science degree, um, for example. 
Um, then there were also some issues with the temple QA methods, like uh, evidence scoring issues mostly. So the temple uh, part was often well understood by the temple QA methods. Um, so here, for example, there was also a first line and then again a when, so two different uh, temple queues essentially. Uh, and also there are some questions that none of the existing methods was able to handling. Uh, for example, here during Macon's senior career, what football club did he play for while representing the Qatar Olympic team? It's quite complex, uh, probably to, to parse, um, especially for QA systems. Um, it also mentions long tail entities, uh, has these steering and wild, so it has quite some complexities, but there was a larger fraction of questions that are really challenging for existing systems. So to conclude, I would briefly like to give also a snippet of how the data looks like. So we provide the final question. Um, we also provide this intermediate pseudo question. We provide the evidence that the uh, question is derived for, uh, from the temporal relation that was used for construction, uh, the topic entity with its attributes, um, the question entities that we identified, the answer, um, normalized to the Wikidata knowledge base and also to Wikipedia and also as a textual label. Uh, finally, we provide a question creation date which could serve as a reference also and obviously also other metadata like the set and so on. So to conclude, we um, propose an automatic method to construct implicit temporal uh, questions which is highly configurable in multiple dimensions uh, we access multiple sources for constructing this method, um, making it uh, more diverse than existing benchmarks. Um, we also cover more diverse information needs going beyond the 5 to 10 temple KB relations that are typically um, there in existing benchmarks. So with that methodology, we construct a TIC benchmark, which has 10,000 such implicit temporal questions. Um, it's derived from these three sources, Wikipedia text, info boxes, and the KB. And we believe that it can serve as a challenging testbed for uh, future temple QA systems. And uh, maybe it could also be useful beyond question answering. Uh, if you have any ideas in that direction, uh, we are happy to chat about that also. So also our code and data is available on our website. So feel free to uh, just look into the data and play around with it if you uh, would like to do that. Thank you for your attention, and if there are any questions, please feel free to reach out.